Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. Today we're going to look at, at Byzantine scriptoriums, where they actually um, copied the Bible at. And so here on TexasReceptusBibles.com, under Byzantine scriptoriums, there's this beautiful picture of these scriptoriums, what it'd be like. A lot of people forget, like... Uh, Heating and air are very recent inventions. Like, i am got a lot of family from South Georgia. I can remember my grandmother when she got a window unit AC. It was like heaven on earth. And so, a lot of human history just didn't have that. And so, Byzantine scriptorians, it's got a fireplace here and all this, helps to, you know, climate control. So let's look at that. Thanks for being here. So Byzantine scriptorians, to continue our study of the Bible before the Textus Receptus, it's important to understand how God's written word was preserved. For those who don't know, the word scriptorian literally means a place for writing. It's commonly used to refer to a room in medieval monasteries devoted to writing, copying, and illuminating of manuscripts by monastic scribes before the advent of the printing press, 1453-ish. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Byzantium rose again to the center of learning in the known world. They considered the West horribly barbaric. As Europe fell into the Dark Ages, the Byzantine Empire thrived. And also, I mean, not only that, but like the Oriental Orthodox Church. They found churches all over China, Japan, from uh, people that would we would say believe Nestorianism kind of thing. Um, the academics of the Byzantines was born out of the Hellenistic world of Greek classics, so they knew Greek superiorly and like the Latin of the West. Ironically, the Europeans viewed all things Hellenistic as pagan, but the empire was pure Christian. It had been since em Emperor Constantine, the first Christian emperor, made it that way in the 4th century, which, oddly enough, Constantine was in all probability baptized in Jesus' name, quite likely after he was already dead, but in Arianism, not in Trinitarianism. The first council of Nicaea did not establish Trinitarianism throughout the empire in a lasting way. That happened well, many, many decades later, over 50 years later. Byzantine, as the capital city of the empire, had many libraries and monasteries. At its height, the imperial library was said to have over 120,000 codices, but the largest volume of books were religious documents and Bibles were made for the monasteries which housed the majority of the great scriptorians. In the Byzantine Empire, nothing was ever lost in translation. The New Testament was written in Koine or Koine Greek, different pronunciations people have, and the primary language of the empire was Koine Greek. There was simply no need for translation work. This situation lasted well into the 15th century, long after the Alexandrian and Western churches had changed other languages. But having scribes who were skillful in the Greek language, the Byzantine scriptorium is a much better place to produce more accurate and much more uh, manuscripts. And this tradition lasted for over a thousand years. And that's one reason the vast majority of Greek manuscripts in existence are basically the same and they're Byzantine manuscripts. And so, and they would also have, like, they had rows here. So they weren't just copying down, you know, Clement of Rome and all this and Ephraim the Syrian. They're copying scripture. And so they all have exemplars, 120,000 examples of Bibles and other ancient manuscripts that were quoting the Bible all over the place. So they knew what readings were accurate. So any mistakes would have been, it's just purely human error. And they probably, unfortunately, didn't treat it quite as well as the Hebrews did, the Masoretic text and the Sophirum and the uh, groups of people. Uh, who transmitted the Hebrew text before the Masoretes as well, which we've gone over here and also over at Biblical Archaeology today. Steve Aldrin, our little podcast we do on Biblical Archaeology. So, this is very significant, Byzantine scriptorians. And it's not just that. Regular Christians, like you and I, we're writing the Bible down as well from accurate copies from the apostles. And this would be, again, in the lost Christianities 
and the things that Martyrs Mirror by Bomvrock talks about, 1637. Foxes, the little groups, hundreds upon hundreds of little groups known as Patrobrucians and Bogomils and all other types of designations. And not all of those were purely apostolic. Some of them were heretical as well but they were copying the Bible correctly. Now, you also had your Gnostics that were making pseudepigrapha and making emendations to the Bible and Alexandrian scribes that in some cases were doing that. So God bless. Thanks for being here. I'm glad God has preserved his word. The truth of God lasts forever. See you later. Bye-bye.